Elevating our thoughts and letting go of all the feelings from our day. Elevating our thoughts to Jesus and asking God, our loving Father, to bless us by protecting the environment of our home, by preparing our hearts, opening our minds so we can receive the teachings that we are about to be discussing during this night of study. But let's just start by saying, this is actually one of the questions, uh, you know, that Kardec brings to us in the book, is, um, you know, uh, how, if man can know about the beginning of things, you know, this is, uh, this was always something a curiosity that we had as human beings. And, and when I say we had, I don't only mean us, you know. When we look back to, I don't know, ancient civilizations, they also had their own um, concept of what was God and the creation of things and all of that, even though, you know, they were not as advanced or, you know, sophisticated in the way that they comprehend God as we do nowadays. This was something that was always inherent to humans in general. And um, it's important for us, right, uh, to be curious. And because the, this curiosity is what drives us to evolve and progress, right? Um, but what the Spirit said is that, you know, although, um, yes, we are curious and we can understand uh, some things of the beginning of, you know, the creation and God, there are some limits, right? Um, and, but why? What is the necessity of having these limits? It's just because, you know, God said that we cannot know things, we cannot, you know, uh, have the full knowledge of things. Actually, no. The limits are, as this slide says, the, the limits are imposed by the necessity uh, to develop in oneself faculties that one does not yet possess. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember, I, it was some classes ago, I believe I was talking about reincarnation. And I gave an example that is very, um, the, the example is also good for, for this, right? Um, the example was, if, you know, a three or four year old son of yours would approach you and ask about um, how babies are made, if you feel that you would be able to describe the whole process. And when I talk, you know, uh, talking openly about uh, the process in which babies are conceived, I ask you to just put the, um, the idea of, you know, if you would be comfortable discussing the matter or not aside, but let's just discuss, let's just try to think if a small child would be able to conceive the whole understanding on how babies are made, right? Definitely not. And so it's the same thing in here. Um, the idea that we don't know the full extent of like how creation happened and how, um, you know, uh, the universe, how many other planets and galaxies are in the universe, it's not because God doesn't want us or these spirits do not want us to know. It's because we are not quite there yet right? Uh, we are not, we still need to develop ourselves. Um, our intelligence is still limited. Um, but as we, pro as we progress, uh, the, the, the bottom part of the, of the slide says, the veil will be lifted as we become more purified. So as we progress, and the, the purified in here is not only in the, in the sense of becoming better souls, you know, it's also in the sense of because the morals and the intelligence, they go together. So the evolution that we are talking in here is that, you know, the more spirit, we will progress in the spiritual scale, the more evolved we are going to be, 
we are not going to advance only morally, but we will also advance intellectually. And so, um, you know, one of the, the ways that we have uh, as humans to understand more about, you know, um, how creation happened and to understand, you know, things of our daily lives is science, right? Uh, in these spirits, they do talk about science in, in this chapter of the, the Spiritist book. Uh, they say that science is an instrument that was given to men by God for the advance of humanity. And so basically, uh, science and religion, they are two igniters of intelligence. One discovers the law of the material world. The other also covers laws of the moral world. Why, right? Um, and the good spirits, they, we are gonna talk about this, how the, the spirits, they also bring knowledge to us all the time. So in this sense, science and religion, they are also interconnected a little bit. Um, and, you know, to the point that some of the, let's think about some of the discoveries that science made, you know. Every time that a scientist decided to explore something, um, the scientist first had an idea, right? That they call the hypothesis. And so this hypothesis is basically like um, the scientist by studying or by encountering an issue in his daily life, he thought he, thought he had this idea, you know, I think I, I wanna study, how this works, or I might have an idea of how this works, and let me try by experiments to prove it. And so it's very interesting uh, to me, when I was studying, I thought that this was very interesting, that uh, understanding that some of these ideas that the scientists have, um, you know, they can come, this hypothesis, they can come from, as I said, things that they are experiencing in their daily lives, previous studies, their experiences in life, but also some of those ideas and some of those hypotheses can also come from elevated spirits, giving them, you know, some intuition. And uh, this is so fascinating. Uh, it, this is a part about science and revelations. And I actually, I did took take the time, if you guys actually put the name of the three uh, gentlemen in, on Google, you will uh, see what I'm talking about. Um, so basically, these three scientists from, from different times, you know, um, different eras of our um, evolution on Earth, they all um, made important scientific discoveries, and all those discoveries were driven by a dream or some sort of um, um, intuition that they had. So let's talk a little bit about them so you guys can understand the fascinating stories. So first of all, this person in here, let me put the, the cursor, um, Kekuli, I'm not sure if this is the right pronunciation. Uh, so he was a scientist. Um, he discovered the, the molecule, the shape of the molecule of the benzene. That was like a huge, he did not discover, the, the compound was discovered prior to him, but they didn't really know how to use that compound. Um, and because they didn't know what was the structure of it, they didn't really know how to apply it, right? So he basically, one night he had a dream. He had a dream about a ring. Uh, he, he said that he, he, the dream was like um, snakes, you know, they were like biting their own tails. Be, uh, forming this ring. So when he woke up in the morning, um, I, I actually, by Googling it, I found um, some, transcribes, uh, some transcriptions of his diaries in which he was talking that how he woke up and he thought, you know, this is a good idea. Let me go to study more and see if I can prove that. And so with this discovery of his, he is considered, you know, the one of the founding fathers of, you know, inorganic uh, chemistry nowadays. Um, another one, Giordano Bruno, uh, he, he, in his case, he had a dream about the universe. He dreamed that he was seeing the universe 
um, that he was like, he, he was walking and then he crossed this veil and he was able to, you know, to start seeing first earth and then the universe in general. So in his dream, he saw that different than, than what they would think in that in the time in which he was living, it wasn't the, the sun that was like uh, orbiting uh, uh, around the earth, but the contrary, right? He clearly saw in his dream that it was the earth that was, you know, moving around the sun. Uh, understanding that, that, that then the sun was the center of our universe. But more than that, in this dream, he also saw different galaxies and more than one sun, you know, different stars. And so he tried, you know, to, to bring this to public knowledge and it wasn't really a, a good thing because at that time, you know, um, the church would very much like, you know, the idea, uh, that Earth was the center of the universe, and he ended up, you know, dying because of of these ideas of him. Of him. But it's also another interesting um, example of how the spirits, you know, the spiritual world can can give us intuition about, you know, science and discoveries here. And finally, um, the the last scientist in in this slide, Frederick Benting, he was the person who found a cure for diabetes. Um, he um, understood how to use um, insulin to treat diabetes. He, his mother passed away because of this disease, because of diabetes. And then he dedicated himself to study more about the disease. Um, and then finally one night he went to bed and you know he had a dream about it. He woke up very similar to the other one, he went to the lab with this hypothesis in his mind and he kept doing experiments until he was able to find a cure. So this is a very interesting thing for us, right? Towards the end of the class, we are going to talk more about, you know, um, this intuition and, and, you know, ways that we can um, open ourselves and, you know, um, because if these spirits are here to help us, you know, in order for us also to receive their help, we need to be willing to receive their help. We need to be open, you know, uh, to receive their help. Um, but this, I, I just thought it was, as I was studying to be here tonight and presenting to you all, I thought it was that, that those were very fascinating stories about, you know, the connection of science, religion and, and how the, the spirits they, they can also help us in our progress because those are ways in which the spiritual world they are helping humankind to progress uh, and you know in in the spiritual literature um we see several times uh these spirits talking about you know how from time to time not only a more elevated spirit comes to earth and incarnates with us to help us with progress, but also how some spiritual mentors from that are discarnated, they come and they also help people with research. And you know, and here we are focusing a little bit more in science, but in the same way that it happens with science, it also happens, you know, in, in other um, areas of our life as well. But then, okay, now we talk a bit about um, if men can know about the origin of the universe and, you know, understanding more about God and how um, we were formed, uh, we talk the role that science and also the role that spirituality has on all of that. And so um, now we can talk a little bit about the, the universal trinity, right? Um, so basically, uh, the concept that was brought in the Spiritist book is that there are two general elements in the universe. One was the intelligent principle and the other was the material principle. And above all of this, there is God. God is the one that is integrating what this, both those principles are doing and he was the one that created those principles and everything else, okay? So basically, what is the, the intelligent principle or spirit, as this slide says? 
So the intelligent principle um, organizes matter by, I, I, I'm sorry, I translated something in here. So um, if, I, if I pause a little bit, it's because I'm doing direct translation right now. So the intelligent principle organizes matter by acting on primitive energy, which is the fluid. We are gonna talk a little bit about the universal fluid. And he animates it in the various form of plant and animal life. Um, so this intelligent uh, principle, as I said, it, it is what undergoes the transformation and becomes the spirit later on. The spirits are, by their creation, they are simple and ignorant, right? This is how God creates us. And then as we grow, we were talking just a couple of slides ago, um, how we are not quite yet prepared to learn about the, the universal truth. Uh, but, you know, we were created as, as simple and, and ignorant. And then we have progressed until the stage that we are right now. And hopefully one day we will reach um, the condition of pure spirits. Um, so basically that's it. The, the spirit is what um, animates is the intelligence principle and the material is what um, can help and can organize the energy and the spirit can help the spirit to live in certain worlds like the world the world in which we are living in here and I know that this might sound a little bit confusing we are going to explore more about the intelligence principle and the material principle um, we are going to talk about them uh, separately. So here it is. So the intelligent principle or a spirit, and I want you guys to pay attention how the spirit has, um, it's not in capital, right? Um, and Kardec did uh, have this very um, differentiation in the book. So basically the concept of the spirit in here as part of the universal trinity um, the, this concept of spirit would be the intelligent principle of the universe. It's the innermost nature, right? And the spirits actually told us that for them, it was very difficult to explain. They said, it is not easy to explain in your language. Um, so basically, um, we can say that this is in the intelligent principle, or we could also say that it's consciousness but it's something that animates, you know, all of us. So what is the difference between what Kardec, when Kardec was writing a spirit with a capital and when he was writing a spirit um, not in capital in the spiritist book? Basically, when he, um, when he was using this one in here, not in capital, oh, I'm sorry, not in caption, he, he was saying that that was the intelligent principle that is in hand, inherent for everyone, right? That is like a spirit in the purest form. When he was using a spirit in capital, he was trying to say that that it was like um, an individualization, then, you know? So basically he's talking about spirits in general, right? The, this is spirit that is the force of so many, so many different beings in the universe. You know, this force, this intelligence, this um, consciousness that can make us, you know, rational beings that can help us to think, that can help us to, you know, understand the difference between right and wrong. And therefore, when he was trying to talk about uh, spirits in particular, like each spirit, like we are, we are always spirits. So when he was trying, you know, to individualize spirits, then he was using the capital wording. I know it's complicated. Maybe he should have just um, used, you know, the intelligent principle or he should have used consciousness you know, it, it might have been more clear for us, 
But, you know, it's also interesting as Kardec was a scientist, he was someone that was trying to organize it, everything, you know, in the book in such a comprehensive way. It's interesting for us to, you know, to make this distinction as well. Um, and also, so in the bottom of the slide, you will see um, that in the plants, intelligence is dormant. In animals, it dreams. And in man only, it awakens, recognizes itself, and becomes conscious. So it means that it's not that having this spirit, this spark inside of us, this consciousness, it's not something that only happens in the human, humans only. This is something that is present throughout the creation of God, but it's just that parts of this creation, um, for parts of this creation, this um, spirit, this intelligence, this consciousness, it's still dormant, or it's in an early stage of development. Okay. Um, so um, also so many spiritualists and people that study this, they say that um, this is this intelligence, or as I said, consciousness to uh, avoid words or using the word spirit more and more times. Um, so it will, as we progress from things of like mineral, plants, animals, this will be developing. This will becoming more elaborate. It will be, um, you know, uh, the I was reading, they said very, in various degrees, if slowly, we are not talking about years, we are talking probably about centuries or even millennia, right? But uh, this is something that we need to stop and, and just be thankful and grateful to God because it's so beautiful the way that he created us, the way that he, um, you know, that all creation works. And it's also an invitation for us. We are gonna talk more about this towards the end of this lesson. For us to be kind, you know, to all parts of creation, to plants, to animals, you know, being kind to nature, because we are all connected, you know. Um, they might be in a different stage of, you know, their evolution than we are, but, you know, maybe millennia and millennia ago, we were in their place, you know. Um, and so we are all part of this creation and, and we should, you know, when we talk about loving one another, we should also think about, you know, spreading the love to the rest of God's creation. Um, so now you might be a little confused. I was talking spirit with capitals and not capitals and it's like, Andy, but what is the difference of that in the Paris period in us? I am just confused. So basically, we are a spirit. Um, I, I, I think that this image is very, um, is helpful because we can almost think that the spirit is like, it's this sparkle, is this force that we all have inside of us. Um, but then for this spirit to connect with a body, which is full matter, the spirit needs something to help this connection to happen, right? And the Paris spirit is it. So for many of us, sometimes when we think spirits, when we, you know, when we think about, you know, for those who are mediums and, and can really see spirits, we might think that the spirit is actually what here in the slide we are calling the Paris spirit. Basically, this, the Paris spirit is, a replica of our body in here, but it's more subtle, right? Um, so some call the perispirit as actually a bridge. So it's a bridge between the spirit, which is totally immaterial, as I said, we could define as a sparkle, but I'm pretty sure that this definition that I am telling you is not 100% uh, correct, but, but by what the spirits would say. But the Paris spirit is, as I said, this bridge, it connects. It's like an envelope, right? That is um, covering our spiritual part. 
And in fact, when we discarnate and when we go to the spiritual colonies, um, we keep the peri-spirit. So um, when we are talking here today about matter and spirituality, it doesn't, um, it, it's not necessarily that this matter is something that only happens on earth, you know, the more we progress different planets and even, you know, these first layers of the spiritual world, as I was talking, for example, the colonies, they still have a little bit of matter over there. The, as I said, we keep our peri spirit, uh, which is not as material as our body, but it's still, you know, a little bit material. It's the brain, right? Um, so, um, any questions so far? I'm going to start covering a little bit more about the spirit and the intelligence. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have any questions, but it might be the case that towards the end of the class, um, some of the questions will be answered. So, so far, we learned that God created the intelligent principle and the material principle. And that the intelligent principle um, is also called a spirit, but it's more like uh, an essence, right? That all of us have, not a spirits in particular as we were seeing. And so it's interesting that these spirits, they gave us this, um, um, this name of intelligent principle because we might, in our limited uh, way of conceiving things, just think, okay, so then if a spirit is the intelligent principle, so it means that my spirit is my intelligence, right? And the spirit said, no, not really. The intelligence is a synonym of the spirit. It's an attribute, it's part of it. Um, but it's not everything that a spirit is. Uh, here you will also see some of other attributes that a spirit has. So I, I, what is an spirit? Is a compound, it's, it's the part that will trigger our intelligence, our reasoning, our will, our self-consciousness, our self-control, the logic, the perception, our sensitivity, and so many more things, you know, the way that we love, all of that. So I know that this sounds a little bit confusing and I am sure that, you know, in the 1850 something, when the Spiritist books, uh, book was being written, this was the language that was available to them, you know, um, to, to Kardec. They use intelligence um, as, a, as a way of explaining, but I just wanna make sure that to you guys, uh, we are not gonna go home tonight just thinking that, um, okay, my intelligence is my spirit and that and it's as simple as that. No, the intelligence is part of it, but we, we all know, right? We have been here so many times, we have been studying um, spiritism for so long. So we do understand and comprehend that our spirit um, goes further than just our intelligence, you know, it encompasses um, our character, uh, as I mentioned, sensitivity and all of that. And so basically uh, some of the attributes that I um, was talking about, it comes from a book that is called Basi do Racionalismo Cristão. I don't think there is that this book is translated, but it's um, it's a, a book available in Portuguese if someone wants to read. So now let's talk a little bit about matter, right? And this is quite fascinating to think um, that you know since this Spiritist book was written, how much science has evolved and how also our view, the view that we as humans have of matter has changed as well. So, you know, in the past, and even nowadays, some people might think 
that matter, when we are talking about matter or materia in Portuguese, um, we are talking as we are talking about everything that we can touch, right? Anything that is around us and that we can touch. And these spirits, um, their definition to us, they said that matter is the ties that enchains the spirit. It is the instrument that the spirits use upon which it si simultaneously exerts exception. And they do say something that I want you guys to pay attention. It says, it may be so ethereal and subtle that your senses cannot detect it and you won't perceive as matter. And so probably for someone that was reading this in the 1800s, the person would be like, I don't really understand. But current science, uh, you know, we have quantum physics, we have the theory of relativity, and, you know, they study all, you know, the, the different um, states of matter, you know, condensation, energy, you know, um, vibrations of things. So matter is much more than we can perceive we still don't we still have a way to go you know science wise and also spiritually to learn more because you know if you ask a scientist nowadays what is a black hole they don't know what you what to tell you they know that it exists they are studying more um but you know they still need to so you know to study discover and in the same way we will progress as I said in the beginning of this class, you know, our spiritual and our intellectual um, progress, they will go hand in hand, they will go together. Now, one of the things that I wanna highlight, and I have talked a, a bit about this already, is um, how sometimes we think, we have this tendency of thinking that everything that is material, that everything that is related to matter is negative, and not necessarily right uh i was talking just before how the the spiritual world that we know you know the parts that we know through the spiritual literature to the books and the literacy um for instance nasular and so many other colonies they still are formed by matter it's a more subtle matter than what we have in here but they still need it um, and also when we talked about the perispirit, you know, the spirit, the perispirit is a form of matter. So it is necessary. It's we shouldn't see matter as something that is um, you know, bad for us or anything. Because um, so let me give you an example that I was when I was studying, I read this example and I was like, wow, this makes total sense. Um our spirit is so powerful uh, that, you know, for the stage in which we encounter ourselves nowadays, it's almost that we need um, this heavy body to contain us a little bit. Because the thing is, we still have our bad days, we still have our bad tempers and, you know, our emotional crises and some angry outbursts. So, can you believe if it would be that easy for, you know, for us to just unleash all of that in, in the world, right? This matter, this body, it's important because we still did not learn how to control um, our feelings. We, did, we still did not learn how to evolve morally, right? So it's again, it's not this idea that one, we don't know the extent of things because God doesn't want us to know or that we are trapped in here in, in this material world because you know, this is the way that it is. There is an explanation, right? Um, it's almost as if our body in this world in which we are incarnated is our controlled testing environment, right? Uh, an environment in which we are learning how to deal with our feelings. We are learning how to improve. As I said, it's a testing environment, you know, 
Um, and I thought that that was fascinating because I had never thought about it. You know, we talk so much about how we have this extreme power inside of us, how, you know, we don't use even like 2% of, you know, um, our capabilities because our spirit is so powerful, but we never stop to think, why is that, right? And, and I, I'm not sure about you guys, but I, I really enjoy when I can make sense of things, you know, um, and, and now it makes sense, right? It makes sense that it's not because what God wants us to be this way. It's because we are not yet prepared. And in certain things, remember the story from a couple of weeks ago about the, the shot? Certain things happen in the way that they happen um, because it's necessary to us. Uh, and, and if we don't, if we rebel against the way that things are, it's because we don't have the, ro the whole um, overview. We don't have the whole vision of, you know, um, where we are in regards of our uh, spiritual progress, in regards to um, what we have done before and what is reserved for us in our future. So um, that's why spiritism is so great and spiritism is so um, fascinating. And I hope, I hope you guys are enjoying this class because uh, I know it's a little dry. I know it's a lot of concepts, but again, those concepts are important for us, you know, um, to, I think it's important for us also to um, understand the purpose, you know, uh, when we talk about God being so good and, and being, you know, the main intelligence of the universe about God being the creator. Um, it's also important when we start actually paying attention to all the details, you know, is when we put together what we are seeing, what we are studying, and what we are feeling, right? And so, okay, I talked about the spirit, I talked about the matter, and now let's talk about the universal fluid. Basically, the universal fluid is an elementary or primitive matter that gives origin to so many things around us, to pretty much all beings on Earth, but not also, not also on Earth, also things in the universe. This fluid has special properties and it produces innumerable, innumerable combinations, as I mentioned. Um, some of the electric and magnetic fluids, um, you know, are modifications of, of this fluid. And, and so it's also nice for us to think about electric, electric and magnetic fluids and fields because it kind of gives us a remote idea of what would be the universal fluid. But basically, why is it necessary? Because, you know, when we talked about the universal trinity, when we talked about God, the spirit and matter, you know, spirit and matter, they are so different, right? They are so distant one from each other. And the universal fluid is what um, the spirit uses so he can exert an effect on matter, right? And in fact, it's so fascinating because science has already started to prove a little bit about the existence of this universal fluid. So, and um, forgive me, because I have some descriptions in here, so I'm gonna read. Um, so the, the field is called Higgs field, and it's a field of energy uh, that is thought to exist in every, every region of the universe. The field is accompanied by a fundamental particle known as Higgs boson, which the, the scientists called this particle Higgs boson as the, they, they gave this nickname as God's particle. So um, basically they say that this God's particle was basically like the principle of everything. You know, uh, this is basically scientists, they were studying, you know, atoms and electrons and all of that and they were going you know further and further until they discovered this one particle in here 
So again, it's it's so fascinating to see um, the things that we are studying, you know, from a religious standpoint are also, you know, already being confirmed by science. Um, so hopefully, you know, as the future comes, as we are moving towards uh, a planet of um, a regenerative planet instead of a, a planet of trials and expiations, this will become more and more common for us, right? Um, so here's to just uh, e e exemplify a little bit. Um, so the primitive matter, which you know would be the universal fluid, um, it suffers transformation and modification along with all the chemical elements. And then a variety of beings in nature are formed. Uh, so basically, this is how the spirits, they talk about creation and how, you know, from the minerals to us, how everything was created uh, uh, around us. But now you might tell me, okay, Andy, this was a little dry, you know, you talk so much about concepts and all of this. And so what can we do? What can we do now, right? Because this is the purpose of our meetings in here every Tuesday, you know, we are supposed to learn things that will help us to progress. So what can we do? First of all, we need to take care of our development as a spirit uh, by we need to take care of our physical bodies. The physical bodies, as we learn tonight, not everything that is material is bad. This body that God has given us is a vehicle for our existence. We know that there is a purpose, right? And if this was something that God gave to us, gave to us, we need to take care of it, right? We need to, we don't need to be crazy about, you know, um, again, balance is important. <laughs> Any extreme uh, is usually um, harmful, but like, having a healthy lifestyle, eating well, uh, doing some exercise, you know, taking care of your stress, all of that is important. But also taking care of your spirit. And when I say taking care about our spirit with everything that we learned tonight, it's not only, um, you know, um, learning um, how to be a better person and working on your self-enlightenment. That, yes, 100% is the thing that we as a spirit is, is what we are talking in here every single Tuesday. But also, you know, learning how to love. And most importantly, we talk so much in this lesson about science, right? Uh, how science and, you know, uh, it is important and how uh, not only our moral progress is important, but also our intellectual, all of that will go hand in hand. So, you know, uh, especially nowadays, that all the time that we have, sometimes we are like social media, right? Instagram and Facebook. How about we also take some time to read a book in different subjects? It could be a spiritist book. It could just be an interesting topic that will, you know, help you to spend your time. So let's let's think about that. You know, let's think about how we can develop ourselves, uh, both um, spiritually, physically, and also intellectually. Second lesson from today: the intuition. As we saw in the beginning of the class, you know, uh, the examples of different scientists that have received the intuition um, from the spiritual world. But in order for us to receive intuition, we have to do our part. Trusting is important, as this slide says. Trusting in your intuition is like learning how to ride a bike. Everything takes practice before it becomes second nature. But, you know, how are we supposed to expect um, to be receiving intuition if we are not living the white space in our life? If all that we do in the busy lives that we have is like uh, move from one task to the other. So 
we wake up in a rush, we have breakfast in five minutes, we drive to work with loud music or listening to a podcast, which is great. But here we are talking about making mistakes. Then you work the whole day, you drive back home, listening to something else, come home, time to cook, and then TV, and then time to go to bed. If you didn't have five minutes of being, it could be meditation is great, but some people, for some people, meditation is still hard. It's just like five minutes of silence with yourself can already be a good thing. Or how about if you were driving, um, try to be in silence or to listen to a music that will make you uh, feel in peace, you know, because feeling the feeling of peace is a, a, an amazing thing that will help us to connect with good mentors, right? Um, another important part for us uh, when we are talking about intuition, I just talked about how music um, can help us with that. But just like music, anything that helps us to put ourselves in a good vibration. How are we, if we wanted to receive good intuition, but we are in not so great vibration, how do we, do we expect that to happen, right? Um, asking for help from our mentors is very important. You know, it's not every time that they can be around us, but if we ask for help, if we are giving permissions, we are opening up, then yes, they, they can come and they can help. And finally, trust our intuition because it doesn't help if you are receiving all these intuitions, but then you are guessing. You are like having second thoughts about every single thing, right? Um, so here the message is also, these spirits are here to help. They are here to give us our intuition to motivate us sometimes, you know, they're almost like they're cheering for, for us, you know, pick this, do this. But we also have our free will, right? So it depends on us uh, to accept all of that and to listen. And, and finally, you might tell me, uh, you know, Andy, but is everything intuition? And I saw... Uh, a post in social media a couple of days ago, I shared this with Rafael. It was so f fascinating that he was talking, what is the difference about intuition and paranoia? <laughs> so basically, you know, because we, we do know that in the same way that we have good spirits around us, we have spirits that are not as elevated and they might also be tr trying to give us, you know, to suggest some thoughts for us. So we know that it's a good thought. We know that it's an intuition and it's coming from elevated spirits. Every time that this is, you know, something that is good, that is gonna help us, that is going to help others. But every time that the, the thoughts that we are having are thoughts that are not good, are thoughts that are like not good on us, judgmental thoughts on others, then that is not intuition. So it's also important for us, you know, to understand the difference between one and the other. And then finally, the final message from tonight's class, um, and this is the final slide. Um, I, I couldn't really find the author of this message, uh, it, but I translated from Portuguese to English and I thought it was so beautiful, it says, the formation of the planet Earth, as well as the beings that inhabited it, are the same. So as we study, everything comes from um, the universal fluid. So deep down, if we go to like the level of particles, we are all the same. So the only thing that is different is the needs and autonomy for well-being. So, you know, when we are comparing us with animals and other um, other beings in this planet. Our evolutionary condition, that is, in the kingdom of nature to which we belong, will show our organic differences, and at no moment our moral differences. And by moral differences in here, I am not talking about the evolution spirits, it's just like 
um, to the sense of I'm not better. It's not because we um, are intellectually more capable than the plants and the animals. We are not better than them, right? So what makes us different from irrational animals is our reason and our free will. The same caution that makes up the organic matter of animals also makes up ours. The same blood compound that runs the veins of different ethnic groups. So I thought that this was a wonderful message, especially you know, for the days in which we live and we see um, so much hate out there. You know, we see people fighting because ethnic differences, racial differences, because the way that people love, um, because the way that people decide to live their lives. We see people that mistreat animals, we see people that mistreat other beings. And if there is one thing that I want you to take from this class, aside of the whole, you know, complicated definition of what is a spirit and what is matter and science and atoms and particles of God, forget about all of that and let's focus on this. Let's focus that we are all creations of God, of a loving father, right? We all came from the same matter, from the same fluid. Therefore, I am not better than you. I am not better than my neighbor. I'm not better than this animal. I'm not better than the minerals, right? We are the same and we should respect each other. We should love each other. For that. And so I thank you very much. I am so sorry if I sounded a little confused at any point in this lesson. I thank you for being here. If you have any questions, I welcome the questions right now. Otherwise, um, I would ask you to grab a jar of water so we can prepare for the passes. Yay, Kara. Thank you. So Kara said that this, that this was a great lecture. I especially love the explanation of why we have this dense physical body because we are so powerful and haven't figured out how to manage ourselves yet in the importance of the spirit and matter. Yes, yes, Kara. All right, so um, if you guys are all ready for it, let's um, go ahead and... I think I have another chat. Yes, thank you, Anna. So since we are talking so much today about the spirits and matter and energy and all of that, the passes are also, you know, a, a way um, in which these spirits are sending energies to us. Um, these spirits can energize us, can help us, you know, uh, also uh, with illnesses, our some, some problems of the soul as well. Um, and I am sure you all are familiar with it, but it also goes very well with the class that we had today. That's pretty Let's prepare ourselves now for the moment of the past. Let's prepare ourselves now for the moment of the passes in the blessing of our water. Place by your side a container with clean water to be blessed and magnetized. Dear brothers and sisters, no matter where you are in this moment, what difficulties you're facing, Jesus is always ready to come to our help. Place yourself now in a comfortable position, one that facilitates concentration and receptivity. Breathe slowly and calmly. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Fill your lungs with air and release slowly. 
Let the energy of tranquility and peace penetrate your lungs and circulate throughout your body. Your soul, in harmony with your body, feels peaceful and at peace. Let us think now about the passage of Jesus among us. In a beautiful and clear day, the golden rays of the sun illuminating the joyful landscape. Multicolored flowers, bouncing chirping birds fill the landscape with optimism. The news of the cures brought a crowd of needy people around Jesus. Suddenly, Jesus appears, calm and serene. His white tunic is light and long all the way up to his feet. At the sunset, all those who were sick and affected by different diseases were brought to him. And Jesus, laying his hand on each one, healed them, as narrated in the Gospel of Luke. Let's mentalize now Jesus approaching us in this moment, placing his friendly hands on top of your head. Feel the presence of this Divine Master right with you, feeling like a waterfall of pure and crystalline waters start to fall from his hands coming from his love to bathe you, falling on your head, streaming down your shoulders, bathing your whole entire being, bringing you peace, serenity, and balance, cleaning all impurities and pacifying yourself. Feel this water bathing you, cleansing and purifying. Breathe. Now think of Jesus as a sun right before you, his light, his warmth, embracing you, enveloping you. Feel the healing emerging, emanating from Christ towards you. He hears your prayers, trust him. His love is infinite, he is always by your side protecting, offering everything you need. Trust Him. Feel and absorb all these magnificent healing energies coming from Jesus in this moment. His light surrounds and embraces you. Feel these energies running throughout your body. Feel yourself re-energized, strengthened and at peace. Dear Lord Jesus, our divine friend, extend your generous hands, Lord, and transform these waters into remedies for our physical and spiritual ailments. Hold us, Jesus, in your peace. Extend your vibrations of love for the benefit of my home, dear Lord. May peace, health, tranquility reign here with my family. We give thanks to you, Jesus, and pray that you stay with us today and always. Thank you, God.